joining us now, Coach Wilson. Thanks so much for hopping on with us. And you had said at that opening press conference just what it meant to be the first black head coach at SMU. Have you had a chance really to really kind of now that you're in the role and you have the whistle, understand what it means to your players and other little girls around the country? Uh, no, it's been a whirlwind, but um, I'm blessed. I'm thankful. I'm grateful that SMU believed in me to uh, take over this program and hopefully change it around and get back to those winning ways. Um, but, you know, just the fact of me me being the first um, black female head coach here at any sport, it's, it's crazy that it's 2021, but it's also like, I think Brooke just said, like, hopefully I'm just not the last. And um, to start that foundation and tradition of, of starting something, but making that history and um, making history in other ways and aspects also, not just being um, the first black female head coach. Coach, you're literally taking over this team. It's it's a whole fresh start. I mean, only two games uh, last year in last year's season. So, you know, tell us about the culture of this team, what culture you want to create there, and what we're going to see with SMU women's basketball. Well, that was the first thing, Brooke, that I wanted to do is, first of all, I had to get some transfers in here that experience, that understood the winning tradition, the mentality it takes. Um, we got amazing transfers here that believed in our vision, my vision, and what I want to do here at SMU. Um, the culture was the first thing, though, that I wanted to kind of get instilled. And we have this little mantra that we want to be selfless and we want to be united and be the most connected team. And um, our mentality of, of being selfless for that person next to you. And so the culture is the first thing, but the girls have picked up that culture, um, the pace, the intensity, how you have to play to be successful. Um, so they've really kind of bought in. It's been really, really great, and I'm excited to uh, see what how we surprise a few people this season. You know, a lot of time, uh, Coach Michael Donald here, a lot of times when you, uh, you get a new job, you're a first-year head coach, and every, you got to do the run through the media. You got to see what kind of players do we have. We get our team set. You're excited to get on the, uh, on the basketball court with, uh, with your women. But then you have to say, oh, yeah, by the way, I have to recruit for next season, too. I'm curious. You talked about your culture, but what's your recruiting philosophy like as a first year head coach? Well, I've been a head coach before. Um, I've been around amazing coaches, uh, coaching under amazing Hall of Fame coaches. Um, but I wanted to bring little pieces of what I've learned from when we, I've been coaching for 17, 18 years. But right now, ours was like 214, the wave. So we were telling kids to kind of ride our wave. This is our wave. This is our thing. Be a part of history. Do something different. Um, so that's kind of when I first got here in April, that was our thing. Like, let's ride this wave and let's get it going. And no matter um, the, the peaks and the valleys, be on this way for each other and, and start something new and different. So that was what our thing was. Um, we had a great, we have a great committed recruiting class, um, but just the kids that believed in us that transferred in and actually is, are my, I guess, official uh, first recruiting class. Um, but I'm really excited again. Like I said, I'm just excited. They, the girls are ready to play a game. Um, it's a lot of teaching, a lot of learning, um, but they're really buying in and I'm excited. Coach, we have a question from uh, one of the media members on Zoom. I'll let Tom toss it to them. All right, thank you. Uh, we'll have uh, John Hendry. Coach, you talked about uh, you were a head coach at one time, and, and I think it was kind of glossed over because you were a successful head coach at a Division One college, and then you make the jump to an assistant. How difficult it was it to make that transition and as you look back on it you still feel that was the right decision I, I think it was absolutely I, I w actually when I went to Baylor and um, we had played Baylor and that last the third the third year that I was a head coach at Prairie View A&M and um, coach Mulkey had saw me speak at a press conference we, she obviously played against us and um, that was an easy decision um, to learn from a Hall of Fame uh, coach and to get better and grow as a, as a coach I still don't believe I was, how I was a head coach from the things that I learned at Baylor and at Michigan. I don't even know how I was a head coach for those three years because I learned so much and soaked up so much um, that I, I'm still doing today. Um, I'm just grateful and blessed that I had those opportunities uh, to be able to learn from the best and learn from Hall of Fame coaches. So I, I definitely 100,000 percent would do the same steps and take those same journey, the same journey that I took already. 
All right, our next question will be come from uh, Stephen Peters with SMU Rivals. Hey, Coach, good to talk to you again. Uh, we talked a few months ago uh, as you got on board with the team about uh, the type of mentality you want to instill with your girls as well as the type of play that you want to have. Um, how have those girls responded so far through practice, and what are you seeing and liking out of your team right now? They're all, they're all bought into what we're doing. They're working hard, um, being tough, being connected. I want us to be the most connected team where we're able to, and I think Coach Jenks spoke about is that chemistry. And the thing is, the experience that these kids, and they voted for the two captains that are new kids that came from successful programs. Jasmine Smith was at Rice. They won the WNIT. Um, and Savannah Wilkinson came from Florida State, and they, they the team voted them as captains. So just knowing, like, hey, these people know what it, what it takes, um, the mentality on the court, the work ethic. And so for me, that hard work, um, that chemistry, that connectedness, that all is what we're little by little every day, what we're instilling in practice. And I just want to get better 1% every day um, and showcase that in practice every day and, and here in the future in games. I know that you, we may not see it right away because you had to recruit to what you want, but what is your style of ball that you want to coach? Um, I'm big on defense. <laughs> so I always tell the kids, there's a way to get on the court with me, and that'll be if you can play some defense. I'll find time for you <laughs> on the court. Um, but also because I believe you have to be able to defend, especially nowadays with the new rules um, and, and NCAA and how you can't touch and one touch here and there. And So I'm really big on defense, but also just kids that know, have a basketball IQ, that know the game, uh, obviously that, that can play the, the game of basketball, but really we're, we're, we're looking for kids that are high level and, and we think we can recruit here in Dallas. It's a great marketable city, especially with the NIL, and um, we're able to, able to get kids that want to come and, play and be in the nice weather and uh, play at a very great academic, high academic, and great conference. The conference is amazing. That was what was one of the attractive things for me. Um, the, attract the, the conference is very competitive. Coach, you gave us a, a sense of, you know, what's important to you, defense. I think that's always going to get you some wins on the game but or and during the season. Who right now, though, is your number one option for offense, and, and what kind of offense are we going to see? Um, well, we don't have a number one. I don't want to spill my beans too, yet, bro too early, Brooke, but um, we have a lot of new kids. Just saying a lot of new kids are going to have impact minutes. Um, we have six transfers, two from Rice, one from Indiana, one from Notre Dame, one from Florida State, and one from UMass. So there's what you can tell you that, that we're going to have a lot of power and punch from new kids that a lot of people haven't seen. Um, so, like, I know we got picked second to last, and I'm really, like, we that's probably perfect where we got picked because they only played six games the whole season. So I'm just really excited to get out there and compete. That's going to be my big thing is, like, compete with these teams every day, um, compete with each other, and make, make each other better. Coach, for the women that were returning from SMU last year that didn't get to play that season, what have you learned about how – what do they do over all of January, you know, February, March to try and keep that conditioning and that competitive spirit? I don't think they did much. Um, I got here in <laughs> April, and um, I had a Zoom with them, and my big thing was – Listen, who loves the game, who likes the game, who's committed and who's interested? Because if you're just interested and you just like the game, me and you aren't going to rock together. We're not going to connect. Mm -hmm. You're not going to like it. So I was like, raise your hand. If you're not, I mean, we can help you do other things or you could just go to school. But for me, I need kids that have the passion that I have for the game. Um, I need kids here that want to, to win, that want to compete. Um, that are committed to this because this is a sacrifice. You sacrifice a lot to play college basketball. Um, it's hard work. It's, it's a lot of tears. It's, it's blood. It's sweat. And for me, like when I first got here, it's like you have to be all in now that I'm here. Um, there's no like I'm one foot in and one foot out. And so they bought in and they were like, okay, Coach T isn't playing. And so I'm just excited to like they're really bought in now. I have no off the court problems. They're connected. Their chemistry is great. They have Taco Tuesdays with the team with each other. And it's just, it's awesome. And so I'm, like I said, I'm really excited um, to raise a few eyebrows when they see us come play this season. Coach T, Toya Wilson, we are so excited to watch you open up the season November 9th at home in Moody Coliseum. Thanks so much, Coach. Thank you. Pony up.
I want to think about that. Like, I, I, you have players that are just transferring in, but you have a group of players also staying here that di- missed an entire season. How hard that's got to be to evaluate what you have on your roster? You know, though, that's a good wake-up call, yeah. though, because it's like, look, we don't have a season, but are you getting in the gym, putting up shots? Are you running? Are you are you actually committed to getting 1% better every day? And so I'm glad Coach T had that Zoom to be like, yo, are you in or out? Because yeah. as a player, that's you want a coach who wants that and who demands that of you. Otherwise, like, what are we doing? Why are we here yeah. to play? How about this? She's got all the cards, too. Like, she wouldn't tell us what she's got. She wouldn't <laughs> tell us her. Like, that, how often do you have time to do that as a head coach where no one really knows what your team is? Well, if you're looking to hit the reset button, yeah. that's the kind of coach that you want that gets on Zoom with the players like, you're not doing enough. Yeah, I love what she said. Like, you either love the game or you like the game. If you like the game, I'm sorry, we're not going to rock with each other. That's the kind of coach you want to reset your program because, you know, the wins and losses, it, it always matters. We know that. It's a business. But if from day one you come in and you say, I need a culture of accountability and stability. That's the type of attitude you, I would want from my head coach if I was an administrator. So really excited to see what she does this season. And they have Taco Tuesday. I mean, who wouldn't be down I'd, for that? I'd, she, I'd like to be on that. She, right, talked right, about, yeah, yeah. she talked about the defense being the key to who she is as a coach. And that's how you were in time with her. From what you see arrest, around the rest of the league, where does SMU need to be good at to be able to compete with the USFs, the UCFs of the league? Yeah, I think that's a great question because we don't know who this – who this SMU team is yet, right? So I think if you look around the league, it's defense and it's competitiveness that is the identifying factor of all the top teams. You got to be able to shoot threes. You got to be able to get uh, rebounds. So to me, those are two of the more important things in this league because you see that throughout the conference, you know, South Florida being one of the best three-point shooting teams in the country. You got to be able to match that same energy. When you're starting from a level of, we don't know who we are yet, and we're trying to figure it out, and we've got USF and UCF, and we want to be defensive-minded, the next uh, steps for that is we understand our defense, but if we can control two things, we're going to win ball games. Even if we don't have the firepower offensively, if we can limit our turnovers and we can have good shot selection, because good shot selection, it's not just about offense. That has a huge factor in how well you play defensively because if your shot selection is good, even if you're missing shots, that, doesn't, that means that you're in position to get back on defense, set up in your half court or set up your zone. And so you look for the controllables, right? We got our defense. We're the controllables. We have to limit our turnovers. Even if we're not making shots, we have to take good shots. Those are the two things to look out for for the Mustangs. Well, let's join Savannah Wilkinson who joins us now to chat with us about the start of the 21-22 season. A transfer over from Florida State. When you were looking to go, what intrigued you about playing at SMU? Coach T's culture um, definitely intrigued me. Um, Playing behind a strong black woman is a huge thing for me as well. Um, I wanted to play behind someone who I know knows how to win. Um, has done it for years. Um, so that was a huge thing for me. And then knowing we had such p- uh, good power from seniors returning at SMU and then other transfers with myself, um, that was a huge thing for me as well. How has the adjustment period been, you know, for you and the team, Savannah, adjusting to her style? And, and were you a part of that Zoom call? And, and what, would that, what did that feel like when she, when she told you guys straight up, you're either in or out? So that was more for the returners, um, but I had a lot of Zoom calls with Coach T as I was getting recruited, um, and she did the same thing for me. Do you like basketball? Do you love basketball? And I said, I love basketball. You're going to have my 1,000% commitment, my drive. Um, so she was all in for me to come to SMU, and I was all in to come here. Um, and I think that's been the culture of the team now is everyone who has stayed, everybody who is committed. We are 1,000% here and behind Coach T and the coaching staff. And we're just ready to get going. Uh, so, Savannah, I'm a little bit jealous because I was a five foot eleven point guard with shoes on, and I always <laughs> wanted to play in the post, and my coach would never let me. But at FSU, you had a chance, uh, almost just because you had uh, injuries and COVID issues, that you were asked to play in the post more, even though you're a guard. Will, will we see some of that inside-out presence from you this season inside of this SMU new SMU offense? 
Yeah, um, I was originally a guard um, coming out of high school. And the nice thing at FSU, as much as injuries were a factor, I got to play lots of different positions. Um, so definitely going to bring my versatility and bring what I learned from FSU and bring my drive um, to be able to play multiple positions on the floor. Um, that's something Coach T wants me to do and, and something I'm really excited to get back to doing. If I were to ask you what is Coach T's style, what kind of ball will we see you play this season? What is it? Defense, rebound, play fast. Um, she wants us to get up and down the floor. She wants us to get stops and she wants us to move the ball. Um, she's, she's, we know each other so well that it's easy to, um, we can know where to find good shots. And that's one thing about Coach T is she doesn't want a good shot. She wants a great shot um, whenever we're playing. So that's a big part of her um, vision and her culture. Savannah, I think I can speak for all of us that we would like an invite over to Taco Tuesday. But with a lot, so many new, new players on the team, especially the transfers, I'd like to know who makes the best tacos and who you need to stay away from when it comes to making taco time. <laughs> well, we usually go out for tacos. That's our like one little kind of cheat time. Um, but we, we do it. We go to a bunch of different things all together. And, and the nice thing is that there's no, there's everybody is always involved. We don't have any kind of like little groups or anything. It's like anyone who's after practice, let's go get food. Uh, let's go do something. Um, so it's, it's a nice culture that we just, everyone really just gets along with each other. Um, and we, we actually genuinely like each other. So it makes it easy to play with each other. So that's a big thing about Coach T is she just wants us to get on and then we can show that on the floor. As someone who grew up in London, England, though, do you appreciate good tacos? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, American food is great. I definitely have to <laughs> limit as, as much I, as I can eat it because my stomach is not quite used to it. Um, I can't eat too much of it, otherwise I will be putting on a lot of weight. So I kind of have to cook myself and then choose my days of when I can eat the American food. So, yeah. I appreciate the honesty. And growing up in Dallas, if you want a, a few good recommendations for some taco places, let me know. Yes, for sure. Well, looking forward to watching you play Savannah Wilkerson as you guys set to open the season on November 9th at Moody Coliseum. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you.